We'll be turning over to Psalm 119. And uh, I'll, I'll introduce what, introduce us to what we're going to talk about. So I wanted to talk about the fear of the Lord. A guy uh, who's passed away now, Pete Ruckman was on, on uh, he has a radio broadcast that's had for years. And so they're obviously recorded recordings from back in the 1990s, I think. But anyway, so he had a couple lately on the fear of the Lord. And I thought it's a good thing to talk about. So so two, two, two primary, primary categories about fear in this particular context. The fear of the Lord is a good, absolute, positive, healthy fear. We should, we should have it, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. And then maybe next week, I want to talk about things that we're not to fear. And, and that's primarily what got me started thinking about this, but I, wanted to, I need to start with this half of it here, the fear of the Lord. But the things that we're not to fear... Uh, you know, I struggle with that a lot in life. Things that I hear someone say that they're going to do that's negative towards me. That, it, you know, that shouldn't move me like it does sometimes. So those are the kind of fears that the Bible says, uh, warns us and, and teaches us not to, not to, to be afraid of. Don't, don't, don't let that fear, the fear of man, bother us so much. So there's a lot to be said about that. We'll get into that next time. But for today, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is great and healthy by definition. And, and there's, there's quite a few scriptures that say the fear of the Lord is. So, but by definition, in general terms, the fear of the Lord is wisdom. In another, in another passage, the Bible says it's the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is clean and pure and so on. But the fear of the Lord is given to, we, we are to fear the Lord. And the Bible tells us all about how and why. As a protection, I don't think God is looking down at us in such that it requires us to fear him such that he controls us in a controlling manner. The fear of the Lord is a protection. And, and um, we'll end up seeing the fear of the Lord comes about because we can start gaining and learning of his judgments, his statutes and his commandments. And the more we learn and understand those, the more we can understand our need to fear the Lord, right? So that, that's the kind of wisdom God would like us to have. When I talk about, or when the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord is a healthy, good, perfect, right emotion within us spiritually, um, if you'll contrast that with the wisdom that that brings, which I hope to talk about tonight, contrast that with the wisdom of the world, which is the opposite of the fear of the Lord. So there's two wisdom sets at, at battle, at, at, uh, at odds with one another. So the fear of the Lord brings about the healthy, right wisdom of what God said, his judgments, his statutes, which leads us to understand his chastening and so on. And that's clean for us. I wrote on this board just a, just a few <laughs> benefits, and we'll run through these verses just to pin these down, but there's many, I didn't write them all, but I have, what, 12 or so or more benefits from the fear of the Lord that we can get. All things God wants us to have and wants us to benefit from. So again, the fear of the Lord, I don't believe, is God to have a thumb on us to control us. Even in a healthy parent-child relationship, that kind of fear is not the right kind where a parent tries to have a thumb on a child to control them in fear. But a healthy, right kind of relationship with us and God is the fear is a protection. It's a protection, and, a, and it brings all kind of other, other things with that protection. So that, that's what we'll, we'll go. I had a note. I wanted to remind us all about this, being thankful and giving thanks. So today, <clears throat> I was sitting out in the barn. I have a little office out there. For those of you who don't know, a little shop desk set up. And I had the door in the window open, and it's what I don't know what it was today, 60 something degrees. Beautiful, low 70, yeah. Mm -hmm. Low 70. Beautiful, peaceful day. I was sitting there trying to, and I'm reminding you because I was reminding myself uh, how thankful we ought to be. No hunger, right? No oppression. We talk a lot about the government's doing this and the government's doing that, but today we had complete freedom to go where we want, do what we want, eat what we want, read our Bible out loud, and not hide. So I had complete. I had all the comforts that I needed. I had no oppression. I had no hunger. Um, and, and I was sitting there thinking, what if, think if you were a person over there where they're having the war over there in Ukraine, 
in one of those cities that's currently being attacked, you, you would have hunger, you would have oppression, you would have terrible fear, you couldn't do what you wanted, you would be high, you would have all the opposite of what we had today. And so think of, think of how many people today possibly forgot to give God thanks for that today. Wow. So I'm sitting there reminded saying, oh my gracious, I've gone this day without giving God thanks for that. Let's I remind you all the same. Let's get to our topic. So in Psalm 119, I wanted to start in verse uh, 120. In Psalm 119, <clears throat> 20. Um, before I do that, let me, let me say, let me give one more introduction point, which I'll cover later tonight or next week. A lot of people today, to avoid facing God's judgments and avoid facing what the fear of the Lord really is, say this, so-called religious persons or, or, or whatever, that God doesn't want us to fear him. God is love, right? You've heard that, God is love. The Bible says that God is love. So, so you're not supposed to run around being afraid of God. He loves you and he is all love. God, that's not true. That's false. And I hope to get to a point to explain to you why people say that. They're hiding from the real fear of the Lord. They're hiding from this wisdom because this wisdom set shows what's wrong with me. What's wrong with us versus our righteous God. But anyway, so God is love, but God is also balanced. And there's many things that God hates. According to the Bible, God even hates certain people. That sounds pretty harsh, doesn't it? But God hates certain people. He hates the wicked who've rejected him. So the Bible says, not me. But anyway, so don't, don't be deceived when someone says, oh, no, God doesn't want you to fear him. God, there's a right kind of fear of God that he does expect and require of us. But it's healthy and it's good and it's great comfort to be in the, in the fear of the Lord in the right manner. Holy and rivers. Sir? Holy and rivers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's... he's He's righteous, as he is. But our, our fear of him is his, it ultimately it ends up being his understanding through this wisdom that we gain, his reaction, his reaction to our sinfulness when we don't follow his commandment. That's, that's what we fear about him. We don't fear his love, of course. No, absolutely not. I don't. Uh, verse 120 says, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. I am afraid of thy judgments. So if I could kind of summarize, start with a, with a, with a summary and then let, try to lay out why I believe it this way. I will go with that verse right there. It says, my flesh tremble, uh, trembleth for fear of thee. I am afraid of thy judgments. So am I afraid of God's death on the cross for my sins? By all, Jesus Christ, by all means, no. Am I afraid of any of the blessings and the benefits I get through the fear of God? No. What am I afraid? Why I'm afraid of thy judgments, right? Because one, he puts the law in our heart for Paul in, in uh, Romans chapter two. But I've read this book enough to know that in many things I have been wrong in life, things that I have thought and done. And so I'm afraid of his judgments. Now, he, he has an opportunity for forgiveness, forgiveness in this life and the flesh. My inward man, my soul and spirit have already been forgiven or forever forgiven. I don't ask for any forgiveness of God in relation to my eternal life, in, in relation to whether or not I go to heaven. That's That judgment's passed. It's done. It's settled once on Calvary. But I do ask forgiveness because in this flesh, in this life, because this flesh is not saved. And I am afraid of God's judgments. And I'll end up saying in a little while, and hopefully showing you some verses that um, I lost my train of thought. That uh, where was I headed? Let's see. Oh, I'll end up saying it this way: God, the fear of the Lord is from God's eyes. It's not. I don't think it's not as much of an expectation for us to hit every one of His commandments, judge, judgments, and statutes just right. We don't have an excuse when we do miss any of them, okay? But the fear of the Lord is more, more of, it includes that, but it's more of this. And we've said this several times. God is always right. His word, this book that he's given us, this perfect King James Bible, anytime I think or do or feel different than what it says, it is always right. 
And in that situation, I was wrong. That is the healthy fear of the Lord. And uh, of course, I, I, I can't say, well, I believe all that. Now I'm just going to go and do the wrong. I, I won't, that'll catch you up to me. But so now go back to Psalm 109, please. No, no 19, 19. Let's go back all the way back to Psalm 19 in a minute. I'll get to a point where I can run through these references up here in order, but I'll have to bounce you back and forth here and there a little. So I'm going to go to Psalm 19 now <clears throat> and, and, and show you more about this thing with his, uh, with why he wrote in, in, in where we started in 119 that he was afraid of God, of the Lord's judgment. So I'm in Psalm 19. I'm going to go to verse nine. It says the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. So it's positive. It's a great thing. It's clean and it's enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. That's what the psalmist said in 19. He was afraid of the judgments of the Lord. Why? God's judgments will always be what? What two things will they always be in that verse? True and righteous altogether. So that's what I mean when I say anytime I think or feel or do different than the words of this book, tell me those, I say, uh oh, I should be afraid. I've stepped out of line with this book. That's the fear of the Lord. I should be afraid. I'm not in line with or I'm not in sync with what I've said, done, or thought with something in this book. There it is. That's the fear of the Lord. And that doesn't mean that I'm not, because I fear him, and I do, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to step out of line. I'm, I am going to, and I'm not, I shouldn't. Shame on me. Shame on me. But all these benefits, none of these benefits that I'm going to read to you tonight say you must follow every commandment of the Lord to receive the benefit. No, the benefits come from when we fear the Lord. And the more I fear him, of course, the more I gain the wisdom that comes with the, with the fear of the Lord, it's easier to, I'll show you, it's easier to avoid breaking God's law. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm in verse 9 of chapter 19. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and honeycomb. What? The judgments of the Lord. Wow, I, they're so right and clean and pure, I should desire them more than gold and great sweet food and all. But at the same time, I'm afraid of them. Why? His judgments, well, let me, let me read on. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. By the judgments, am I warned? Are we warned? And in keeping of them, there is great reward. So the psalmist said, I'm afraid of his judgments. This passage says the judgments are true and righteous altogether. We're to desire them more than gold. Da, da, da. And it says that, that, that those judgments uh, are what are warning to us. And in keeping them, there's great reward. So it's not that I'm, again, it's not that I'm, it's too late for me to already been perfect with God's commandments, right? It's too late. I've, I've messed them up many, many times over. But if I can understand, gain the wisdom that comes from the fear of the Lord, understand what those judgments are, and allow those judgments to warn me, look at all the benefits, and we'll read these verses in a minute. Look at all the benefits that we can have with the right, healthy fear of the Lord. And so, so um, what a what a what a great thing to me. Let me uh, let's jump backwards to Deuteronomy. This, this, this is Israel here, but it's the example is applicable in terms of what he's doing. Go to Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5, verse 29. Of course, here we're dealing with Moses and the people. Let me, find my, let me read one verse in five, and then I'll go to chapter six. It says, oh, that there were such an heart in them, excuse me, he's talking about Israel, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. 
and, and he's the God saying, if they would fear me, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. The problem with our world today, now go to chapter six, please. The problem with our world today, and the Bible says so, is there's no fear of God left in many people. The, the, the fear of God and the wisdom that comes, if you had a little child and you were going to leave her with a babysitter, if you thought the babysitter had the fear of the Lord, you'd be way more comfortable leaving the child. If you wanted, if, if, if there was ever a president run for office in our country and I thought he had the fear of the Lord, of course I would want to vote for him. I'd want to go to work for a company where the leadership has the fear of the Lord. There's, as you can see here from these examples, there's great protection and benefit in the fear of the Lord. I'm in chapter six of Deuteronomy. Um, now, these are the commandments, uh, the statutes and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land, whether you go to possess it. By the time we get to this passage right here, God started out, he brought them out in the wilderness, right? 90 days in, he gave them the Ten Commandments. That, that, they messed that up. He gave them a more, another set of judgments and statutes. All the way, there's 600 and some odd, okay? They had, the tabernacle was built a perfect way. Each specific type of sacrifice for the various sins and, the, and, and all of them. So, okay, he, they've got it all right there. So, he says, now here they are. Verse 2, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all the statutes and his commandments which I commanded thee, commanded thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey, and so on. So it was, it, the, the law was given to them back there, that they might, um, that it might be well with them. And the example I was getting to was going to make with that is what we all know what happened to them. Did they keep any of that very good? Off and on, certainly as they went through time. But what's but, but is it well with them? Was it well with them? They had some good times leading up after this. Uh, king David and Solomon and so on had a great kingdom, but it felt started falling apart after that. And where has it been the last, the last what 2,000 years or more? It hasn't been well with them at all. And I'll end up saying that if we don't fear the Lord, it, it, it won't be well with us. All right, let's go over to Job. Job, just before Psalms 28. Job 28. Job, at the end of Job 28, it says... This is referring to God right here. Job 28, 28. And unto man, he said, so my, this is God. Unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to, to depart from evil is understanding. So there it is. There's the fear of the Lord by definition. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So how the fear of the Lord is wisdom, how? It's, I, I told you before, it's all directly tied to his judgments and how we respond to his judgments and so on. But I'll get to the verse in a minute. But when we, de it says that once we grasp the fear of the Lord, then we can begin to know wisdom. How is the fear of the Lord wisdom? It's the fear of the Lord that preserves and uplifts and keeps and gives us what we really want. We think not. We think that the wisdom of the world gives us all what we really need and want and care for and so on. But it's really the wisdom of God, and that can only come from the fear of the Lord. The, be the beginning of wisdom, the, another passage says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Did you, you may not you may not have thought it through in this exact manner, but when you got saved, you were afraid. That's you. the beginning of your wisdom, the wisdom that matters to you. And I don't mean wisdom in a, in a 
in a, a, a secular career. I don't mean wisdom in what you do or the sports you enjoy or that, but the wisdom, the eternal wisdom, the wisdom of God started with your salvation. How so? You had to be afraid to go to God to get saved. If you weren't afraid of anything, which is God's judgments over you being a sinner, you didn't get saved in all likelihood. You didn't get saved because you loved God. It says we love him because he first loved us. So you got the beginning of the wisdom within you and me started with the fear of the Lord. When I got saved, I was young, but I realized, oh no, I've seen enough in the Bible that's been preached and taught to me enough. This hell thing is real. I am afraid of God sending me there. That started off my journey to salvation, which was which was pretty short and simple. So fear the Lord. All right. Um, let's go to mm, Well, I'll, I'll read that, what I was just talking about. I started talking about it before I read it. I'm, I'm going to spend most of the time now, hopefully, in Psalms and Proverbs. We may move around a little bit. Let's go to Psalm 111 now. And let me read what I just told you so that at least we pin that pin the down. <clears throat> Psalm 111, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom starts with the wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. A good understanding have all they that do his uh, commandments and praise his praise endureth forever. Look at the next verse down. We'll read it. Uh, I'll catch it now. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Do you do you want the blessings of God? Do you think that the blessings of this world can do for you anything permanent or eternal? The blessings of the world can't even really bring us much happiness. So I'd rather have the blessings of God any day. But how to get them, according to 112 verse 1 is, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth in his, greatly in his commandments. All right, now let's, let's turn to Proverbs 1 close by to the right, and understand something about those that don't fear God. Let's, let's, understand, let's read this passage about those that, that could care less. Look in Proverbs chapter 1. Look at verse, let's see, 24. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. These are people that don't fear the Lord. But ye have said it not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. So that's a man or a person right there that does not care for the judgments of God. Remember the judgments of the psalmist said he was afraid of the judgments of God. This person said I could care less for him. Verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. This is God talking to a man, a person that didn't want to hear any of God's counsel. He said, this book is unpleasant or unfun. I don't want to hear it. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. If you, if, if you fearing God is your choice. By the way, all the things that are going to happen to those people is the opposite of what you get right here in fearing the Lord. It's the, it's the direct opposite of what we're about to look at those verses here in a minute, the benefits of the fear of the Lord. For they... For that they hated knowledge. Remember the fear of the Lord brings this wisdom. And of course, knowledge follows and understanding and how to apply that wisdom comes. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Look in the next verse 30. They would none of my counsel. They despised all of my reproof. Do you remember in Psalm 10 uh, or Psalm 19? It, we read earlier that uh, the judgments of the Lord are pure and righteous and that we are to love them more than want them more than honey and gold and silver and so on. 
these people right here don't because they don't have the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. Don't get, don't talk to me about that stuff. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me, it doesn't say follows my law perfectly. It's too late to do that. We should still work towards that, but it's too late. It, he doesn't require that of me and you. But whoso hearkeneth unto me, just listen, just fear him. Just don't run from his counsel and judgments. Read them and cherish them. Whosoever hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. And that look back up in the same chapter to verse 20. Now, how can God be so harsh in judgment on these people? His, his fear that they could have chosen is, look in verse 20, wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. The fear of God and his judgments and commandments are not hidden. They're not hard to recognize. Paul said in Romans 2 that when the Gentiles do by nature, that don't have the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, that it shows that we have the law written in our heart. Anywhere in the world, you and me know, and the, the, the cultures of the world know that lying, stealing, and adultery, and all those things are wrong. There's no... So how could God be so harsh? And he, God Almighty here in verse 26 says, I'm going to laugh at your community, and I'm going to mock. God's going to mock a person. This is serious. At his judgment for whenever that person's going to be judged, who, who didn't choose the fear of the Lord. Isn't that? That's pretty harsh, isn't it? How could he? Wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. 21, she cried in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttered her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? You scorners delight in scorning, and you fools hate knowledge. You don't, no need, no need. Turn you at my reproof. They have a chance, had a chance. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Is the fear of the Lord hidden from anybody? Not at all, not at all. So that's that's somebody um somebody that don't uh, fear the God. They got a, they got a problem coming. All right, now let's back up to Psalm 119 again. Let me read another verse there about this business. Okay, this is not work. So I just read you about how God's going to deal with those that did not choose the fear of the Lord. Look in, I'm in Psalm 119, and I'll go to verse 63. And that says, I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. I'm a companion of them that fear me. Who do you want to be a companion of? You want to be standing beside one of those people as their companion that God's going to mock and laugh when their fear comes, when destruction comes as a whirlwind? Or do you want to be a companion with those that fear God? I was saying, I was giving the example earlier. Do you trust your child with a family that fears God? Or do you trust your child with a family that don't? Where do you want your child to be? Where do you want your money to be kept? With a manager that fears God? Where do you want to work? Do you want to keep companion? Where do you want your friends? Who do you, what do you, who do you want to be companions with? I can tell you for a fact, it's, and it's safer and better to be in company with those that fear God right? Again, we're not all going to, God doesn't require of us and hold his thumb on us and say that I'm going to knock you down hard if you don't keep every one of my commandments and statutes. It, again, that's important to do, but it's more about, God, your commandments and statutes are right. And as I gain the wisdom that comes with fear in you, Lord, in the right, healthy manner, I start to get how those statutes commandments are set to keep and guard and protect me. They're not to squash me down where I can't live and enjoy the life. God gave us this life to live. His judgments and commandments are not designed to squash us down where we can't enjoy and live. But once we start gaining the, the fear of the Lord's beginning of wisdom, once we start seeing that, we start saying, oh, wow, I like these commandments and judgments now. In this flesh I live in, I sure mess them up sometimes. 
but I'm starting to see the benefit of them. I'm starting to see how they protect the children. I'm starting to see how it would prevent war. I'm starting to see how it prevent evil. I'm starting to see how it would it would bring me joy and laughter and peace every day. And it takes it takes a little doing to see that sometimes. It don't. It's not just perfect. Back up to Psalm 36, please. Mm. Takes a little time. I, I'm stubborn. I'm hard headed. I don't see it real good sometimes. The, this is this is. It takes a second to think about this verse here, verse one. But this is something that the more we think about this and read and consider those judgments of God, that not only should we love. Can you can you understand we're supposed to love those judgments? He said, and then in the next and in another passage when we started out a while ago, he, the psalm said, "I'm afraid of those judgments." That's okay. It's okay to love something you're afraid of in that regard. The transgress. I'm in mean, thirty six. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flattered himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He set himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Verse one, the transgression of the wicked saith within my heart, meaning you, I think this, you and I can see out there in all that wickedness and within our heart, what do we say? We recognize it. the transgression of the Lord. What do we see from that? There's no fear in his eyes. If you'll flip on the television, right, and the news, and you see all the evil going on, you, what is the first thought a Christian that's thinking about these things says? There's no fear going on. There's no fear of God. This, this book says that a nation whose leaders don't fear God is going to fall. That's what this book teaches, the Bible teaches. So when you see that, you're saying to yourself, there's no fear of God before them. That's what we see in our heart. When I see the transgression of the wicked, and then it, then it goes on to say, excuse me, what the wicked is, uh, excuse me, what the wicked's all about right there. Um, all right, let's think for a minute. Um, all right, let's go forward to Proverbs again. We'll take some things in order. I think Proverbs 2. This is uh, uh, when you, what, in, in, in regards to this, King David was not a perfect man, but look at look at what he, uh, he cared for, for his son Solomon. This is what Solomon wrote. I mean, it's Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear into wisdom and incline thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her, searchest for her as for treasures. If you'll do that, he's talking about God's wisdom here, of course. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Then, let's read it one more time. What will it take for me to find understand the fear of the Lord? If I receive my words, God's word, and hide my commandments with thee, so shalt thou incline thine ear into wisdom and find thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lift up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for us for his treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk upright. He keepeth the paths of the judgment, the paths of judgment, and preserveth the way of the saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, and every good path. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, again, the, the more we can learn about the wisdom that comes with the fear of the Lord, the more joyful life can be. It is not a drudgery to learn these things. It is not, uh-oh, I got to get up tomorrow and I can't have any fun because of all these things, these commandments and judgments of God. No, 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 no. It's the opposite. And the wisdom of the world wants, wants us to think and teach us that, oh, no, if I got to worry about this book so much, 
life's going to be such a drag. It's the opposite. There's a higher level of joy and understanding that they have. Um, go to chapter 8, Proverbs, please. <clears throat> The fear of the Lord, I'm sorry, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So there's another definitive statement about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Did you know that you can hate evil and, and get caught doing something you hate? I, I have. I hate evil today, and yet I'm a sinner and shame on me. So uh, I keep saying that God's not looking to put his thumb on us and oppress us so that we can't move every time we break one of his commandments or have a bad thought or whatever. But do we hate it even when we do it or when someone else does it? Do we hate the evil that we've done, not the person? Do we hate the evil? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, okay? Then, the, then he defines this a little bit better. Pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth, do I hate. Y'all remember, last, I think it was last week, recently we, we turned a couple of times lately to Isaiah chapter 5, where it says, there's three woes. It says, woe unto them that call good evil, and evil good, that make darkness light, light, darkness, put light, and so on. Woe unto them, it says. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. What is back to my point? What is arrogancy and pride? Here it is in this context right here. God, I'm not worried about what that says. I feel this way or that way, or I want to do this or that. That's the that's lacking the fear of the Lord. God says he hates that. And again, there's there's a separation between doing perfectly and just saying, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. The word of God says not to. I need to think on that more. I need to consider my ways. I need to consider if God's pleased with that. Does that make sense right there? If you read, we won't tonight, I want to run through these verses here, but if you read all of chapter eight, wow, you see so many benefits from the fear of the Lord. There's a, there's a whole listing of them in eight. If we have time, we'll get to them or, or next week we might. But in, back up a page to chapter 3, he says, Air, pride and arrogancy I hate. Look in chapter 3, verse uh, 7. Here, here is what Isaiah 5, 20 is talking about, or an example where he says, Woe unto them that call good evil, or evil good. Be, verse 7 of chapter 3, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Be not wise in thine own eyes. What is wise in mine own eyes? In context of fearing God. God, it don't matter what you said. I think it's this way, whatever it is. Aren't we all guilty? Aren't I guilty before thinking just wanting something to be some certain way so bad and ignore what the Bible says so I don't feel guilty about thinking it? He said he hates pride and arrogance. And there it is. Be not wise, not on eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. All right. Um, verse, uh, chapter 14 of Proverbs. Please. <clears throat> okay. Chapter 14, verse 16 says, A wise man feareth and departed from evil, but the fool rages and is confident. Do you, I'm trying to link the word confident there. That God hates pride and arrogancy and, and who's righteous in their own eyes. Confident is what? In me. I'm, I can do it. I'm, my way's okay. So I was talking to somebody not long ago that said, hey, they didn't want to mess with drugs, that they were afraid to mess with drugs. That's great wisdom. That's the kind of healthy fear that will protect and guide a person. That's what God wants. And so, anyway, those are those are those are the things. Let me uh, let me just show you the verse for these because it's so important. These are the benefits I listed here: fear of the Lord. And let, let's let's do those and then be done. 
it won't take us. I got them. I think I have them in, in order biblically here. Let's let's start in. A, we'll start in the Psalm thirty-three. This is one of my favorite verses. This was a, one of Jody's memory verses when she was young, and um, this is a. So I'm going to run through these pretty fast. So so let's let's turn to each one and just man, I, every one of these are marked in my Bible, and um, um, because I'm I'm a, I have to be reminded of the fear of the Lord. I'm in Psalm thirty-three. Benefit number one, and I don't have all the benefits of the fear of the Lord tracked. I just got some highlighted ones that, that, that mean that I remember myself. Psalm 33, 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. And here's the benefit. To deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Don't you, wouldn't you, and that's, I, that famine is literal. Wouldn't you want to be, wouldn't you want God to find you how to get some food during a famine? Remember the Ethiopian that helped Jeremiah when the city was besieged and they had eaten everything in the city all the way down to the horse's head and the bones and so on? The uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of Nebuchadnezzar, commanded them to give that guy some money. Or, I mean, give, give uh, uh, Jeremiah some money and food. But Jeremiah, the Ethiopian that took care of him, Jeremiah, let, they let him go free and, Jer and he got fed. So anyway, to... So the, one of the benefits is take care of in famine. Move on ahead to 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Briefly, we've studied the story before with Elijah and his servant, and there was a war. The bad guys were coming, the enemies, and had them surrounded, and it was the two of them, and the servant was afraid. And Elijah opened his, God let him open his eyes where he could see the spirit warfare in the realm above them he said don't be afraid there's way more of us the good guy the angels the spirits taking care of where it was angels or not there's a difference sorry wouldn't you like to know that if everywhere you go in this life the angel of the lord campeth around about them that fear him wouldn't you like that one? wow that one's huge to me i pray that, that god protects my my loved ones when they're out in that manner. Let's go to, let's jump all the way ahead to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. The benefits of the fear of the Lord. I'm just trying to show you a few of my favorite ones because these are important. 103, 17. Psalm 103, 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. And his righteousness unto children's children. Remember, I said earlier, it's not so much about how much you follow the commandments perfectly, but how much you fear the Lord, accepting those commandments are right. Well, there it is. Why would he have mercy? On, why would he need mercy if he expected you to follow them perfectly? He don't. It's not an excuse to go wrong, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting earth upon them that fear him. There's that mercy. God, I messed up. But I know your word's right, so I'm afraid of your judgment. Have mercy on me. And there you can have it. What a, what a, what a great thing. 112, Psalm 112. We read this a while ago. Bless, praise you the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Boy, don't, don't, don't I want that blessing. I have, I have, I'm undeserving of it. I'm moving ahead to Proverbs now. I'm just trying to stay in order. Proverbs 9. Increase the life written on the board that it increases the years of this life. The fear of the Lord does. Everybody here, I think, wants to live a long life. We all have young ones. There's grandkids. There's, we all want to help and, and be involved and do. I'm in Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me, fear of the Lord, beginning of wisdom, thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. What a, what a thing. What a blessing. Um, 1027, chapter 10, verse 27. Contrast that to what we just said. We, I just read to you that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and so on. And by that, 
Thy days shall be multiplied and thy years of thy life increased. In 1027, it says, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Which do you want it to be? Which do you prefer? I know what I want. Chapter 14. Refuge, a protection. There's an old hymn that talks about the Lord will be a refuge in the uh, time of storm or something like that. I don't, I don't know the song really good. Uh, I'm in chapter 14 and verse uh, 26. Let me find that. I think I have. Yep. 1426, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. That means that's your confidence. You don't have to be afraid of man. But in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Don't you want that when the troubles come, the storms of the hardships of this world come? You want a place of refuge? The, uh, that war over there that's going on, we see on the news now. What if there's, and there can be, very well, there's, there's likely people that are saved there that God has carried them through. He's given them a place of refuge. He's gotten them on a bus to get out of town. He's gotten food to them or something. He's hid them somewhere, right? That could be. But there's a promise right there. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. You want a solid, healthy, strong fountain of life. Man. These are not, these are good. Um, chapter 16, verse 6 says, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, a man departs from evil. Let the, let the verse sink in. By mercy and truth, whose mercy would that be? God's. Truth could be his or mine. God, I was wrong. You were right. I need your mercy. Iniquity is pure. The iniquity, of course, is not God's. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Man. Verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to wake up tomorrow and everybody that is in any way thinking anything wrong towards you, your enemy, would be at peace with you. Be great. 19. Let's go to 19. This is a good one here. All of them are good. This is one of my favorites. 19, verse 23. Um, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life. I like that. I need that. He that hath it, the fear of the Lord, shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Folks, if you can imagine what this world is like and what it could be like and what it's like over in the Ukraine right now in certain places of the world, how would you like to not be visited with evil? Job, I'm sorry, Jabez over in Chronicles, it's, there's, a, there's a passage there that says he called unto the Lord God of Israel and the Lord hearkened and listened. And he asked, Jabez asked God for some things that he would protect him in largest coast. And he, the last thing he asked him for, he says, and that thou will keep me from evil so that it doth not grieve me. So Jabez asked God to not let evil come about him and cause him grief. And it says in the Lord, because Jabez was more noble, it says in the Lord granted unto him that which he requested. Wouldn't you like to not ever be busy with harsh, grievous evil? Right? I would. The fear of the Lord helps keep us from that. All right. I'm going to jump down to 22, Psalm 22. Psalm 22. He says, verse 4, by humility and fear of the Lord, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Those riches don't always mean money. There could be, you could be rich in family, rich in whatever, whatever you desire. What if you desire a peaceful, loving family. You could be rich in that. What if you desire whatever? So the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Well, verse three, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. A prudent man fears the Lord, but a simple don't. Chapter 31 of Proverbs. 
the last chapter in the book, and this is about you ladies. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful opportunity. I'm in 30, so, uh, Proverb 31, verse 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So being favor in the, favorable in the world's eyes don't always do it. Being a beautiful woman can't do it all. But if a woman who fears the Lord can get the real praise that matters. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Remember, God don't look on the outside. He looks on the inside. A woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. What a, what a, what a thing. Jump to Ecclesiastes chapter 8, right there where you are, right on the side. And pick up one or two more of these, and, and we, we, we shall move on. So in chapter 8 of Ecclesiastes, in verse uh, 12, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. He, the wicked don't fear before God. Isn't that something? All right, I have one last verse to talk about, and I'll pick up next week. So this is this truly is one of my favorite memory verses. So I'm going to go to Malachi, uh, the last book in the Old Testament. You'll probably know where I'm headed because I've, we've talked about, I've read this verse to you, Mike. Malachi 3. And you, you can strive for this just as much as I can. We can all strive for this equally and together. So I'm in Malachi chapter three. This is the last one I've written up here. And it the fear of the Lord will place you in an eternal book of remembrance. If you're saved, you are already in God's book of life. You are eternal in that book. You're in the book of life. You're saved. You can't get out. You can't jump out. But that's not the only book that you have opportunity to be in. I'm in Malachi 3.16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. What they speak about? Well, we're tonight. We fear God, so we're talking about his, his words. That's what we're talking about. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that what? Feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. When I put those two qualifications together, when I fear God and think upon his name, I should be more than I do saying, what does God think about? What does he care about? What I'm about to do, say or think, right? For them that fear the Lord and thought upon his name, here's the promise. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Wow. That's pretty neat. You meet some people and they want to talk to you about the words of the Lord. You meet some people that don't. The people that fear the Lord may not always talk about it in all the travels and all. I understand that. I don't always talk about it as much as I have opportunity. But I do fear him. I do fear him because I know he's all, this word is always right. And I too often am, 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 am uh, odds with this word. But I know this word's right, and I accept that. But anyway, isn't that, isn't that neat? Your name could be in a book of remembrance that's written out before God. And the result of that is they'll be mine in that day when I make up my jewels. The people in that book are made up as jewels to God. What a thing. So the fear of the Lord is great, wonderful. It's clean. It's the beginning of the wisdom. It's what led me to salvation. But his judgments, I can love them at the same time. I can be afraid of them because I've, met, I've worked against them too often. But look at all what you get from the fear of the Lord. And there's more. And, um, and so, um, wow, it's like, a, it's like a new level of understanding when you get that wisdom. But you say, wow, I don't, the joy of the world wasn't what I thought it was now that I'm starting to recognize and understand this other joy. 
And it's man, it just brings all these benefits. It starts to when you when you work on it. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, that, that's that's that. Next week we'll we'll look at some things that we ought not to fear. Because there's some of those too. Thank you, David. Okay, man. Derek, Derek called me on his way from home to that. Right. And I'm gonna send you a couple of comments about that on your uh, uh, message. <clears throat> okay. 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 Anytime. Yes, sir. No, no problem. I'll, I'll be in touch. Uh, thanks. Okay. Bye-bye.